Hello and welcome to this Google Plus Hangout. My name is Brian Casey, Editor-in-Chief of AntMini.com. Uh, today we're going to be discussing the important topic of breast density and mammography. Uh, it's just been in the last few years that the women's health community has become aware of the impact that breast density has on mammography screening. And much of that awareness comes from some of the guests that we have on the call today. Uh, Nancy Capello, PhD, is the founder of Are You Dense? It's a women's health advocacy organization that's been instrumental in getting uh, density awareness laws passed in over a dozen uh, states in the U.S. Dr. Jean Weigert is a radiologist with the Hospital of Central Connecticut and is director of women's imaging at uh, Mandel and Blau MDs in New Britain, Connecticut. Uh, thank you both for, we, for being uh, with us today on this Hangout. Thank you. Great to be here. Great. Uh, Nancy, can you talk about your story a little bit? Um, it, it really kind of uh, encompasses in one person what the, the breast density movement is about and, and what's going on here. Sure. Thanks, Brian. Good to see you, Dr. Weicker. Um, I was diagnosed in 2004 with advanced stage breast cancer. I had um, 13 metastasized lymph nodes. Uh, the cancer was the size of about a quarter. I had just had a mammogram about six weeks prior. The mammogram was normal. In fact, I had a decade of quote-unquote normal mammograms. I was a very faithful patient, ate healthy, exercised daily, had no relatives with breast cancer. And so, as you see on the screen, the happy gram is what I affectionately call my normal mammography reports that I received. And this was the one that I received um, six weeks prior to my diagnosis. Dear Ms. Capello, we are pleased to inform you that the results of your mammogram are normal. Little did I know at the time, uh, Brian, uh, that my um, normal mammogram was not normal, that I had what's called dense breast tissue. I never knew about it until I was diagnosed with the advanced stage breast cancer. And so six weeks later, I find myself at an um, annual gynecological exam, of course, being a faithful patient. My breast surgeon did a thorough breast exam and said, I feel this thickening, Nancy. I'm going to send you on for another mammogram, which again, saw nothing. Because the lesion was palpable, um, the diagnostic um, ultrasound picked up an, an inch suspicious lesion, which was later diagnosed as late stage cancer. Um, again, not shocked that I had breast cancer. What I was shocked about when my, when my now my nine doctors, um, they were telling me that my cancer was probably um, at a later stage because they felt some lymph node involvement under my arm. So my question to my docs was, what happened? I don't understand. Why, why didn't my mammogram find my cancer? I just had a normal mammogram. And my docs proceeded to tell me, well, Nancy, first time I heard this, you have dense breast tissue. I have what? Dense breast tissue. What does that mean? Well, it's mean it's, it's harder for the mammogram to see through the density to find cancer. It is? How long have you known this? Well, we've known this for a while, but why aren't you telling me this? Why didn't you tell other women this? Well, we just don't do that. And so, what do you do? I mean, I'm faced with, you know, surgery, treatment, you know, am I going to live or die? Um, what do I have? And being an educator, I certainly was very um, interested in, in what, I, what I basically had and, and what it meant to me. And so I, I went to the literature. And what shocked me was a, that at the time, this was in 2004, there was nearly a decade of research, starting with from Paula Gordon's research in 1995 about dense breast tissue, about how hard it is for the mammogram to find the cancer as density increases, the sensitivity of a mammogram decreases, that 40% of women have dense tissue, and that there are other tools like an ultrasound or MRI that can find cancers that mammal miss. And that really began, be, be, began the birth of, of, of getting information about density to women, to the patient, because when I went back to my docs and said, look what I found, look at all this research, shouldn't you start telling your patients about this? And each of them said, no, Nancy, we just can't do that, it's just not the standard of care. And so, as Dr. Weikert knows, um, I, I decided with my husband Joe to go to the Connecticut legislature, and that's really what started started this work. And where Dr. Weikert comes in was um, we initially had a, uh, an ultrasound screening bill that became law, insurance coverage that became law in 2005, and um, I thought that doctors would, st would start telling women about their, their breast density, which they didn't. And so we began legislation about density reporting in 2007 and where Dr. Weikert comes in is in 2008 um, our density reporting bill did finally come to a public hearing and um, Dr. Weikert was representing the Connecticut so Society of Radiologists I believe you were secretary at the time she's now president and um, testified against the, um, the bill so Jean maybe you can talk a little bit about that what happened there and again 
where we are now in Connecticut. And then again, as you can see with the with the map, um, since our, our legislation was passed in 2009, we have 13 state density reporting laws across the nation. And that's a, that's a really remarkable accomplishment that, that you guys have done. You've gone from one small state in the Northeast to really something that uh, is is expanding uh, expanding quite a bit across the U.S. So I, I think that that's, well, that's really an amazing thing. You know why it's amazing, and, and in some respects, it's it shouldn't be really surprising because I would I say there's actually no shortage of women like me who followed all the rules uh, year after year after year. Unfortunately, they never knew about their dense tissue and what it really the impact of it on their on their accuracy of their mammogram. So. Again, no shortage of women like me who've been harmed by their density end up with later stage cancer. Yeah. Now, Dr. Weigert, if you could talk a little bit about what your, when you saw this bill come up, this legislation coming up, uh, how did you feel about it? Well, I'm pretty much a typical breast imager. At the time the bill was um, put forth in our Congress, uh, in our legislature in Connecticut, I've been in practice over 25 years. And so, I think that I represented the average radiologist who was doing breast imaging for the bulk of their practice. And we felt that there was, although some research, there wasn't enough research to prove that doing full breast ultrasound in women with dense breasts was warranted as a standard of care. We knew that mammography saved lives. We know that mammography has been controversial for many years and remains controversial in certain groups. And we didn't want to go backwards with the mammography. So mammography remains the touchstone. We must do that. But I think that now we have seen that there has been research that has shown that, it, that adding additional imaging, like screening breast ultrasound, can help find these cancers. But at that time, in 2008, we were really uh, unsure. We thought it might actually make women afraid to come in for their mammograms. I, we thought that they actually may be scared that they were being a, given another diagnosis, a, quote, dense breast diagnosis, and what would that mean to them? What we didn't realize was that it worked very well. And then in the spring of 2008, the ACRIN, which is a very large, multi-center trial, 6666 trial, came out that proved that in high-risk patients, now these were patients that had over 25% risk of developing breast cancer um, due to their history or family history, that there was an additional 4.2 cancers per thousand. Now that almost doubles, it actually does double the number of cancers that are found from just mammography alone. And when this research was published, we realized that we had to move forward and to no longer be the naysayers for this legislation and that it was important that we accept the legislation and allow it to be passed. Of course, this opened up a huge, huge number of things that we as radiologists had to do in our practice in the state of Connecticut to make this happen. And um, what we did initially were there were many aspects of our practices that had to change. and. Um, I don't really have time to go into all of that now, but let us just say that it took us um, a good year to work through this learning curve. But as part of that year, um, I was able to, and I'm very grateful to the help I had with my colleagues around the state, gather data uh, that showed that we too, even with non-high risk patients, find cancers in this, pa in this patient population. Yale University also did their own subset study, and we have a slide that shows their data. Um, but what was interesting was that my data with just clinical practices around the state, over 8,000 of these screening breast ultrasounds, we found 3.2 cancers per thousand in addition to their screening mammography results. And I think at the end of that study, most of the naysayers were more convinced that this is a valid addition and that we have to start changing the paradigm for evaluating women with breast tissue density over 50% that they need not just a mammogram, but that they need a mammogram and potentially a screening breast ultrasound. So you've been converted. I have been converted. Many of my colleagues have been converted. Not everyone has been converted, I will say that. <laughs> but like everything in science, things take time, a lot of time. Okay. And, and Nancy, are you seeing this pattern repeat in some of the other states where breast density laws have been passed 
that, that maybe some of the radiologists and breast imagers are a little skeptical at first, but later they come around? Yes, I mean, we're seeing two things. We're seeing that, Brian, where there are folks that are not really too keen on it. But we're also seeing, which to me is just phenomenal. Now, a lot has to do with Dr. Jean Weikert's work and also um, Dr. Regina Hooley's Hooli, work at Yale, is that we're seeing um, boots on the ground radiologists, breast surgeons, gynecologists contacting us and saying, you know what? We want to help you in our state, or even initiating legislation. In Tennessee, we had a doctor, radiologist, Dr. Um, Camille Kowalski, who initiated the legislation. So, you know, do, do, radiologists have known that there, there is a challenge about um, of dense breast tissue. There is a challenge by mammography. And, and I am thrilled and pleased that we're able to really garner such support now, um, although, albeit, still have a lot of um, opposition and some, some certainly some trade organizations with reservations about our work, um, but the, the beauty of all this is that we're giving many more women an opportunity to have what I never had, access to an early breast cancer diagnosis. Either early matters or it doesn't, and if it does, then breast screening means more than just mammo. Okay, great. Jean, something you'd like to add? <laughs> I just wanted to add one more thing. That what is so fascinating is that um, we are finding cancers, and in, we've now, and Yale has also, gathered two years of data, and we're finding more cancers. So the thought that these cancers are not out there, they are out there, and they are still not being seen on mammograms, and we're finding small, we're finding node-negative cancers, we're finding all kinds of cancers. Cancers are come in all different flavors in terms of how aggressive they are. That is called the grade of the cancer. But what is important is if we can find a low-stage cancer, cancers that do not have positive lymph nodes. These are the ones that we can treat. True, the high-grade cancers, the aggressive cancers, are going to be harder to treat overall. But the smaller you find them, the easier they are to treat. And whether you find them on a mammogram or an ultrasound or an MRI, these women have a better chance of survival. Okay, very good, and that's what it's all about in the end. All right, so thank you for being with us today. Um, next time we're going to talk about some of the technologies that are being used uh, for uh, to kind of compensate for mammography's shortcomings in uh, dense breast tissue. And until then, I'd like to thank uh, Nancy Capello and Dr. Jean Weigert for being with us today. Thank you, uh, and I hope to see you at the uh, RSNA meeting in yes, Chicago yes. coming up. Yes, uh, yes. Very good. Thanks and for hanging out with you. Sure. <laughs> it was we'll fun. It was fun. <laughs> Signing off for uh, AntMini.com, my name is Brian Casey. Bye-bye.